What's up guys? Welcome to today's Locals episode and I am super excited today because my Despia deck is fully powered due to the Albash deck, Structure deck, and I know we talked about this before in our previous video, but Grand Diffusion, Rebellion Dragon, Mirror J Dragon, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to show you everything guys, so stay tuned for round one. Also, guys, if you guys love videos like this, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And if you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Jen, and this is our Locals episode series. And also, guys, make sure to comment down below if you agree or disagree with any of my card choices. And again, you guys can tell me everything I did wrong. Maybe my misplays. I read every single one of your comments, guys. And I think round one's about to start, so I'll see you guys there as soon as my camera does. Alrighty guys, we just ended round one and this... Hi! This gentleman was our lovely opponent, Justin. So Justin, what were you playing today? So I'm playing Branded Eldic. I know! I, <laughs> you, I thought this was gonna be a mirror match, so I was like, oh my god! Theater's gonna affect both of us! Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. did not care about that at yeah, all. Yeah, 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 no, 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 I got it completely wrong. So, how was the game? It was honestly... Well, going against you, I was, like, I was already intimidated, like, oh gosh, no, YouTubers. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, in my honest opinion, it was a bit more, it was more in my favor because, like, my whole deck is to stun everybody else and right, let me play. Right, Eldic right. has a, an immediate advantage with skill yeah. run on board. Yep. And then, uh, and you saw game two, it was like, fancy spell. Yeah, what and I was do? like, ah. Oh. Yeah, and you went first too. It was like, okay, if she goes off, I'm fine. I could have had the dragoons. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I was even prepared. I sided in Super Poly against you. Oh, yeah, no, no, that would have perfect. Yeah, that would have worked perfectly. Yeah, oh, that yeah. was like like the branded deck. It's so powerful, mm. but everyone's like I think prepared for it. So you're just kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everyone. Yeah, everyone's yeah. like super. Oh, we're ring. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, everyone's just, like it's so like, popular right now. So like, yeah, yeah. everyone who knows how to play with it knows how to play yeah, against it. And, exactly. And I was I've been on the branded deck for like so long. I was, like, I was so ready for the structure deck. <laughs> but yeah. But thank you so much for the games. Oh, thank you. And we'll see how you guys end up. Because, like, I always record the first player's deck profile. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see how we do. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Coffee break. Oh, I missed my show. <laughs> I missed my show. Let's do it. Seamless. Seamless. Coffee break. All right, guys. This was our lovely Brandon for round two, two. Uh, how did we do uh, how was game one <laughs> game one was a uh, turn one pass turn one pass turn one pass so it's kind of just seeing who got first no! yeah you exactly. took game one yeah i know because it was funny because game one you went first because you won the die roll and then he just went oh battle phase and phase i was like wait a minute hold on how are you gonna do evenly match your <laughs> but unfortunately you said you break yeah. yeah all hand traps yeah. only hand traps oh, oh that's what you yeah, oh. only hand traps. So I didn't see anything else. Oh yeah, because you only gamma me. Yes, gamma yeah, bells. That that's all I had. That's it. Yeah. No wonder because I see. I thought this was a ploy, so he, he doesn't know how to side. Yeah, exactly. Game well, two. I was part of it. I was part of it too. <laughs> I was part of it. But yeah, Brandon took it. Who is my foot? I got very lucky. Apparently, VW's best. VW's <laughs> best deck. It's a good deck. It is. A, no, it's a good deck. It is a very good deck. But yeah, yeah. thank you so much, Brandon. Thank oh, you. Let's see how we do. Round Rest three. of the day. Good luck. Alrighty, guys. Welcome to game four. So yeah, this was actually a really special game because as soon as I sat down, my opponent was like, this is my first day at Locals and I'm coming from Master Duel. So please explain to me like each of your cards. So I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. So yeah, but I do start off with the Brand Diffusion though. <laughs> and I immediately go into Albion with the Hexlight and the Fallen of Albaz. And yes, the Albion effect to go into Dragoons. I haven't done this at all. This was my first time doing it <laughs> this entire day. So yeah, I had to refresh myself because I haven't used Dragoons in a long time because I did take out the DP package, guys. I just couldn't. I couldn't deal with seeing Celestial and Dasher in every single hand, which was the case for most of my tools, unfortunately, but um, Hex Slide is much better in a sense because it is a light and I can use it for, you know, any other fusion substitutions, right? I could even use it for a Despia monster. So definitely better than seeing a Celestial or Dasher. So I actually super poly my Albion and then his Vion into my Predator Plant 
because I was holding it off. Also, I was also holding off my Dragoon negate, which it paid off because I negated the Anaconda. <laughs> so that I dodged the bullet there. And I believe I do OTK him this game because I think I do go into Titanoclad immediately afterwards. And oh, I also do want to mention guys, uh, usually I do like having Branded Opening in the graveyard because obviously this is a very, it is a fusion deck and Branded Opening saves fusion monsters from being destroyed. I could just banish it all from the graveyard. So don't forget that. And yeah, I immediately go into Branded Fusion <laughs> and just go into my big boy Titanica. Uh, Titanica, that's why sometimes I did like having the nib because if I use the nib and my Fallen Valbaz, that thing becomes big, so that's a very big OTK play. And yeah, we just go immediately into game two. In game two, he goes first. I did not draw any hand traps, so the man goes off. And again, like I said, I think, oh my God, it's so wonderful seeing Master Duel players actually come out to locals and play. And he did mention that he got his entire deck from a friend. Kudos to that friend, by the way, especially a hero deck. and. He's learning his deck. I think he also said he wanted to build Despia, so that was really nice to hear. And yeah, uh, he got the <laughs> Plasma and the Bane out, and that's just a skill drain and a monster negate. So from here, I had to start off with the Shrouded Dragon. So Shrouded Dragon allows you to, if you send a Brand Dispeller Trap from your deck, you can uh, put the Shroud Dragon in the bottom of the deck and draw one, which I did. I sent a Branded Opening. But if you do send it from your hand, you get to uh, Special Summon the Shroud Dragon directly. But at this point, I needed more card advantage, so I chose to draw, to take the draw one. And I go into Medium to Branded Fusion. Uh, you know, there was no point of me going to Masquerade or Albion into the Dragoon because it's already negated and unfortunately I do not play any imperms. I should because I am thinking of bringing this deck back to next week's locals. Maybe adding other things instead of uh, maybe maybe I should kind of like switch out the hand traps to be honest because I did take out the nib this time. And yeah, and then I go into Brandon and Red. Get back to tragedy. Then I go into Despion. <laughs> Excuse me if I'm butchering the name, Quartar. <laughs> honestly, I just wanted a body on board at this point. And I know he took the Lubelion um, from his Plasma, but it was on my turn. And that's not a quick effect, guys. So, I mean, that's just, you know, just common misplays. It happens. So, you know, if you guys do turn into that, like, it, it happens. Guys. It, it is an innocent misplay, which I do as well. And this game, I do get OTK'd because that plasma, well, you know, I, even though it's a mistake, you know, I just, you have to let go. So that plasma did gain my Lubellion's attack and I couldn't really do much here. So I do believe I did scoop this game. And yeah, this was a really friendly match. We go directly into game three. Oh, I do have to also say this gentleman did not have a side deck. And he was like saying, oh, you know, he's gathering all the cards. And yeah, like I, I was kind of, <laughs> I don't know if I want, if I should side or not, because just to be fair, but I mean, it is a locals, you know, that is the rule. I mean, if you don't have a side deck, unfortunately you don't have a side deck. And he did bring up, so while we we're actually going into game two, he told me I was going first while I was siding and I told him, Oh, next time to even to your other opponents, don't tell them that you're going first or second because you're already giving them advantage and they're gonna side whatever that you, you know, based on the choice you make. So don't do that, guys. Do not tell your opponent you're going first or second, especially to newer you guys, newer players. And as you can see here, I set up a full board with Masquerade, Albion, with my Luber and Dragoon, and I also put out a second Masquerade. But I did make the one mistake here though, in this game, I should have had the double masquerade out first. So, you know, you lo he loses the 1200 instead of the 600, then I could have easily taken this game, but unfortunately, that was my mistake. And yeah, again, <laughs> he, he took my Dragoon with the Plasma, that beefed it up, and I just immediately got OTK'd here. 
But I, I was close. I was close because I did get him down to about like 2,500 life points. Alrighty, guys. We just ended round one again. Four? We ended round four. It did not go well. I had two masqueritas, but it still didn't go well. I got yelled at. <laughs> By the coaches, yeah. I got yelled at by these bozo. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though. You guys, you guys were telling me really good pointers. I will definitely remember that for like the next week or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you remember them. I remember it. I remember it. No, because Reggie told me a big brain play. Oh, yeah. A lot of plays. Jen, Jen. Like, like, Jen. <laughs> Yo, for next time, yeah. Yeah, yeah for cool. next time, for next time. But I think the feature match will be this bozo and uh, this bozo. I think. Is, is that what's going on? We're both on the field. Huh? Yeah, I think so. Also, it should, it, will, it should be you guys. Yeah. Alrighty, then. Unfortunately, this will be the future match. What you mean, unfortunately? <laughs> what, what's this with me, bro? These guys local. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, this will be the future match. So, anything to say to your opponent? Uh, I hope you break. Uh, okay. But good job. Good luck. Peace. Peace. Anything you have to say to your opponent? He's kind of free. Tool him. Say it to me. You're kind of free. So you you think you can tool him? Depends. 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 I well, I want a die roll. Alrighty. We'll see you guys after the feature match. All right, guys. So we are finally into the feature match, and I'm going to be reacting with you guys in real time. All right. So I'm not really sure what either of these players are playing, but let's see where this goes. So he's going to start off with a Rite of Armistice, grabbing himself a token for Faithful Adventurer. And then he's going to summon Sea Crush Wyvern. So already we can tell he's playing Brave ABCs, which is kind of a spicy deck. And then he's going to add um, the Draco back spell. And then Union Driver, grabbing him B Buster Drake. And then he's going to summon the B Buster Drake. And then going to grab himself, oh, into to to play a Verte Anaconda here. And then it will grab him the A Assault Core from the deck because they did go from field to graveyard. And it looks like, yeah, so he's going to actively Predator Plant Verte Anaconda, pay cost, and get Matt with the Fat Gamma. Okay, that's a pretty hot play. I'm not going to lie. So at this point, I'm not sure if he already has the Wandering Griffin in hand, but yeah, he just passes. That's literally all he can do. Now, I'm not sure if he bricked or not, but we don't know. Now, the other player is going to banish Aqua, uh, Aqua Chantress. And same thing, Rite of Armistice, Token, and Faithful Adventurer. And then he's going to activate Branded Fusion. Okay, this is spicy. He sends Fallen of Albash and another card, and he summons Albion. And what Albion is supposed... Oh, he's oh my god. He sent Fallen of Albash and Elric the Golden Lord for Albion. That is spicy, all right? Now, let's see if he's going to use the Albion effect here. Because Okay, so he's going to use Albion effect to Special Summon or Fusion Summon Mirror Jade Dragon. That's really spicy. Now he's going to go Mirror Jade Dragon. He set a card. It was Imperm. And then, oh no, he set the card, which was Imperm, and used Golden Lord Effect to summon the Golden Lord for 3,500. And then he's going to beat into it for OTK because the Mirror Jade plus the Golden Lord plus a token is OTK. And if his opponent didn't have any follow up, he was going to be winning that game anyway. So I'm generally curious on what their thoughts are going into it on how to side. Because generally speaking, the other player is playing Branded Elric DPE Brave. So trying to, you know, side in Ogres isn't that powerful if he only opens the Elric engine because there's nothing to Ogre. So, you know, it, it, it becomes a situation where it's really hard to side because, you know, you generally have to figure out what you want to hit. But most of the time in the Brandon matchup, you do want to be hitting like the Ash on the Brandon Fusion or Ash on Sanguine in a simplified game state. But other than that, there really aren't that many hand traps that he can go that can kind of touch every single engine. But let's see how this goes. So we are in game two. Um, the players are done siding. And of course, you got to shuffle it up nice and good because when you're playing a couple of bricks and ABCs, you're bound to brick here or there. So, you know, you definitely want to be seeing a really good going uh, going firsthand. So um, he does draw his cards and he's going to start off with the fat. Hmm. Foolish Burial. And he's going to dump Aqua, Aqua Chantress. He's going to banish it for Rite of Armors here, which again, this play is really old. He's going to activate Token, grab Faithful. And then let's see what he does here. Let's see what he normal summons. He's going to maybe summon nothing. Oh, okay. So he's using Faithful Adventure effect to grab himself Wandering Griffin. But now he does have to discard a card. So if this is all he has for a negate, then that'd be pretty tough. But it's okay. So he's grabbing the Wandering Griffin. But let's see what he discards. He's going to end up discarding 
Hey. He's thinking a long time on this discard. I would too. If this okay, so he, okay, he discards another right of Armistice, summons the Griffin, and he passes. Oh my goodness. Man, this is game two. You're going first. You sided all the good cards. Oh my gosh. Okay. So he's going to get met with an evenly match. And then he's going to negate it with the Wandering Griffin shuffling it back. He's going to banish the Aqua Chantress, which will get him right of Armaseer and the token and Faithful Adventurer. I'm, I'm not sure why he didn't summon that in attack mode, but maybe, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, what's going on. Um, so he's going to grab himself Wandering Griffin, pitching Aqua Enchantress, summons the Griffin. Grabs Draco back and he equips it to the token. This is a very standard adventure brave line or that was redundant. They're the same thing. And from here on, it looks like he's going to pass. No, he, he okay. So he uses Draco back to shuffle back the quote unquote token. He's going to set two cards and pass. His opponent is going to draw a card and it's and we don't really know what he drew yet, but let's see if it's something nice. Hopefully it's a ABC monster so he can get his plays going. But the fact that, okay, so he has Sanguine and Conquistador, which is kind of insane. I'm not really sure. Yeah, so he pops the Faithful Adventurer, summons the Golden Lord. So he can't get the Faithful Adventurer effect back to get the Griffin, uh, the Griffin Rider back, which is really important. So he's going to here. He's hand shuffling. He does have Celestial in hand, which is definitely not a good look. But he also does have Mystic Mind. And because he used a pop already. Oh, so he... he Elects not to use it. He passes it back over to his opponent. He he probably could have Mystic Mind his opponent there. I don't know why he didn't. Um, he's going to go Faithful Adventure, grabbing Griffin Rider, pitching Sanguine, summon the Griffin Rider, going to Link Spider for the token. And this should be game. Okay, he's going to Link off for Verte here, I'm assuming. Yep. And then he's going to go Fusion Destiny. And the Golden Lord gets met with a bell. But even with the... Yeah, even with DP, it's game over. What's going on? Alrighty, what happened? What do you mean? What happened? What happened when? When? Just now? Or huh? 30 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah, what happened? Uh, yeah, I break. Yeah. Pretty bad. You'll see in the video. It's all bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. I need prosperity, so that's like the thing, mostly. You, get, you gotta get the Mula yeah. for the prosperity. Uh, just borrow from some friends. <laughs> All right, next next week, next week, we the next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. All right, you guys. Well, oh, you I got it. my OTS pack. Let's see it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Will said he was want to open it on camera. It's nothing. There's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. I mean, I'll open it for content, I guess. See what I get. I got a 15. This is a lot of a business. Oh, oh, oh yes. The the brick, the brick. So I see you. And we got the Insector. What about you? Alright, let's get 15. Okay. Yeah, we had a choice of what we could get. Now so we have a choice? Yeah, 17, 18, or 15, I think. Okay. And then speed build 1 and 2. Yes. So I chose 15, trying to get Ulti Hog. You know. Oh, yeah, the Ulti Hog. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll just do a little reveal. Alright, ready? What's this? Uh, oh, I'm you got level a three. vampire domain. Okay, and yeah. boom. Ah, Inferno Boys. How? Oh. Inferno Boys. We tried, we tried, boys we and girls. Tried, we, we tried. Alright, Pilch. Yeah. Give us a general reminder. What, what were you playing? I was playing Eldritch, Branded, uh, Brave, DPE. Toxic. Alright, give us a deck profile. Yeah, it's pretty toxic. So, I'm going to start off with the Eldritch engine. You play two Lords. You play three Cursed Eldlins. I might cut this down to two. I'm not sure. I play three Sanguine, which is just standard. Triple Conk, which is also standard. And just double Hakuero, which comes up so much now with DP and everything else in the format. But then I also play one Golden Land Forever, which didn't really come up, so I might cut this. But it was nice to have just in case. And then I'm going to move on to the Brave Engine, the backbone of the deck, because it's Toxic Engine. Three Enchantresses. One Griffin Rider for the monsters, and we play three rights, one Fateful, and one Draco back. And then we go on to the bricks of the deck for the DP engine it is Dasher and Celestial, and also playing two Fusion Destiny to accompany that. And the final part of the main engine is going to be the Albez engine, which is double Albez and triple Branded Fusion. This card is so good because you get to send the Golden Lord with it as well, which just sets it up in Grave to do more. 
I played another small engine just to include it. I played one Souls and one Illusion of Chaos I borrowed from a dude today, so I don't have it with me. And then moving on to just other standard stuff, just general stuff. I play triple skill drain. It's like the only big floodgate I play because I feel like it comes up too much. And then for hand traps, I play triple ash. I put the gamma engine in there because usually you're going to resolve your uh, spells first before having any monsters. So it comes up a lot. It's just very good to negate stuff. And then I play triple bell main as well. This didn't really come up as much, but this could three could just be anything you want. I just prefer Bell for this format. And I also play Triple Imperm, which is better Veiler. And that's the main deck. Now going on to the extra deck, you pl I play for the Brand Edge, I play Triple Albion. You cycle through this too much just to only play two. So playing three just allows me more grind game. Play one Lubelion. You barely make this. You're mostly going to make this with Souls, Chaos, or Double Albaz, which I did one time. And then I play two Mirage. That's it for the Albaz fusions. And then I also play DPE as a last fusion. Just crazy card. And then for the Lynx, I play two Charmers. I play Lina and Dark. I didn't make these today, but it does come up in certain situations. But did not come up for me today. I play one Lynx Spider. I might bump it up to two. But this card comes up too much with the Brave token and the Elwich cards as well. I play one Verte. I also want to bump this up to 2 just in case you negate the first Verte. It's also good in grind game because you can send uh, Fusion Destiny first. But then you could just send Branded Fusion later if you make it again. And then I play Nightmare Phoenix and Unicorn. And does link up to Axis Code. But also is good in board removal. And for a funny card, I like to play Omega. It's just funny when I just Omega on my... T I do Cypher Omega or whatever it's called. I should make this to get a card up out of the hand. And also it recycles uh, Water Enchanters as well, which also came up one time, which is really funny. And then we'll move on to the side deck. I play Triple Ogre, Triple Nib, Triple D Barrier, which I did not use today because uh, I ended up winning all my first games. I play Double Judgment, Double Anti-Spell, and Double Evenly which makes the side deck. I never really got to utilize anti-spell today. It never came up, but it does come up if you do draw it, of course, which I never did. But evenly, it was kind of an MVP today. Drew it in my two final matches. And just allowed to bait out in the gates and other stuff. And that's basically for my deck. Alrighty, guys, I hope you enjoyed that Locals episode, and I hope you enjoyed seeing all my misplays <laughs> and sh me showing off the new branded deck. Oh, guys, like I love this deck. I really want to make this work and I know it's topped in Bogota. Kudos to that player and let's see if I can make that dream happen next week. So as I mentioned, I think I'm going to be adding maybe in perms or something because yeah, I, I don't really have other negates. I think that's the only thing with Despia. It definitely needs one good Omni negate or something. Who knows? Maybe we'll get the support guys. So if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And also, again, I read all the comments. And again, to you Master Duel players, if you guys do want to come out to Locals, come out and play. And it's just so different, like, touching actual cards and playing. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed that. And this was Gen, Gen from Head to Head Battles, signing out. What's, What's up, up guys? guys? If you haven't subscribed, make sure to click that button right there in the middle. Also, if you haven't watched that video that YouTube is recommending you, it's probably crazy, alright? Go watch it. This is Susu from Head to Head Battles. Head to Head Battles. Signing out.